Lohan Green was Wagner's last romantic opera and delights the listener with heavenly music. It is worth to know a few things about the opera and to know the most beautiful parts to savor it. If you want to know the plot of this opera, click on the link in the upper right corner. Like all operas of Richard Wagner, Lohan Green has a dominant autobiographical component. Even as a young composer, Wagner wanted to seek success in the European mecca of operatic music, the Paris Grand Opera. Almost obsessively, he sought recognition in the European opera capital. But in vain. The two Paris years were among his greatest humiliations and he had to leave Paris unnoticed and over-indebted. Like Lohengrin later, he saw himself as an outsider who wanted to change the traditional rules of art and failed because of the inertia of society. His next place was Dresden, where he was hired as Kapellmeister of the court opera, and from there he visited Wartburg Castle in Eisenach several times. He was fascinated by the legends of the Middle Ages and by the knights and castles of Germany. In 1846, a three-month summer vacation took the Dresden Kapellmeister Richard Wagner to nearby Graupa and Pirna in Saxon Switzerland. Long hikes took him to the Liebetaler Grund and to the famous rock formation of the Bastei. The experiences in nature and in the castles of Germany made a deep impression on the 33-year-old composer and inspired him to delve even deeper into the mythical world of the Nordic culture and inspired his romantic creativity to write his Lohengrin. Wagner, the court opera conductor, became involved in the revolutionary movement and met with the anarchist Bakunin. After three days of street fighting, in which Wagner participated, he was sought by the authorities and forced to flee. Richard Wagner saw himself politically and artistically as a revolutionary and so Lohan Green was a brother in spirit. Lohan Green's true adversary is not Friedrich von Telleramund, but Ortrud. This person was not a legendary figure, but she is a genius creation of Wagner. Ortrud is the sorceress enshrined in Germanic religion who invokes the Germanic goats like Freya and Wotan in the second act. This opera almost becomes a battle between the realm of God, the unconditional love and paganism, the sorceress power. Wagner juxtaposes two different worlds. In Lohengrin is the purity of the Grail Knights and the dark world of the pagan sorceresses. If one also analyzes Ortrud one level deeper, she can be understood as the reactionary who opposes the revolutionary artist Lohengrin alias Wagner. In the end, both fail. The artist because he does not receive the recognition and the reactionary because history does not do him justice. The failing artist, however, creates the space for the new in the person of Gottfried and is thereby redeemed. Among the most beautiful passages is the prelude. It's no longer a piece exposing the themes, but it becomes a part of the story where the listener is attuned to what is to come. Essentially, the overture comprises the musical Grail theme, held in a celestial A major, the key of purity. A great highlight is Elsa's dream. Einsam in trüben Tagen, lonely in dreary days. A slow introduction and a grand sustained crescendo culminates in the Grail and later in the Lohengrin motif. Listen to this piece in Gondola Janowitz's interpretation and you will experience the purity, vulnerability and confidence of Elsa. Her crescendo is breathtaking and the ending is world-weary. You can find all links to YouTube videos in the description below. Nun sei bedankt, mein lieber Schwan. This appearance of Lohengrin is one of the great challenges in staging this opera, how to stage the appearance of the swan without seeming heavy-handed or even provoking ridicule. 
Musically, Wagner presents us with an overwhelming section that should speak for itself, so he deliberately takes the pressure of the director to fall into the trap of overstaging. Fanfares, a long crescendo, brass and a virtuosic choral section show the great theater man Wagner is. Nun sei bedankt, mein lieber Schwan. Franz Liszt, the conductor of the premiere and Wagner's confidant, wrote an interesting commentary on this scene. He emphasized that in this passage, the tenor's timbre requires grace, velvety and softness, which is far from the usual Wagner tenor with its vocal weightiness. Placido Domingo was able to fulfill this demand in the most beautiful way. The next act begins with a beautiful morning scene. The men gather, accompanied by fanfares and choruses. The next scene features a highly dramatic war of words between Ortrud and Elsa. Wagner deliberately orchestrated this scene sparsely to ensure the intelligibility of the words. The scene of the two women is repeatedly accompanied by interjections from the chorus, which greatly heightens the drama of the situation. Listen to the so-called balcony scene in the Absolute Dreamcast with Elisabeth Grümer and Christa Ludwig. The next piece belongs to the most famous pieces of opera music. It's the Wedding March, treulich geführt. In Fernem Land, uh, in radiant A major, Lohan Green tells of his origins. In a solemn voice, he sings of the annual miracle. Every year, a dove approaches from the heaven to strengthen anew its miraculous power. It's called the Grail. A beautiful soft forte of his voice in A shines above the wearing sound of the violins. It's a demanding passage for the tenor. He must keep the vocal power high without straining the voice. At the end, Lohan Green reveals his name. The voice changes, it becomes magnificent, glorious and heroic, not at all hollow, but noble. It's the climax and key of the opera. The tenor must sing his most important section at the end. That is, the singer must have enough vocal power reserved at the end to bring this section to a climax of the evening. Listen to UC Burling's interpretation. The melancholy that hovers over the interpretation is breathtaking. The finale is the swan song. Listen to Jonas Kaufmann's interpretation. His voice is romantic and heroic and captivates with beautiful diminuendi and pianissimi. Lohengrin is probably Kaufmann's best Wagner role. 